Hey y'all, Jason again here from the D2. Today Fabio is going to be talking with Federico Bianculo from the Big Picture Visuals in Italy. If you like this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We'll see you next week. Live in 3, 2, 1, and we're recording. Yes! Good morning Federico, how are you? Good morning Fabio, fine. Yes, everything's fine. Good sunny day in Bologna. Perfect day to go out. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you. Tel Aviv? Yeah, it's all right. It's uh, it's very warm. It's uh, you know, it's uh, dry as always, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very sunny. But uh, still, you know, it's a uh, it's a shame because I'm always working and I never have the time to go to the seaside. Yeah, I feel you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wanna first of all, I wanna thank you for taking the time. I appreciate your time, man. I wanna make a very quick introduction to who you are, although. This is your job, and I hope you're going to do a much better job than I can. But okay. I'm with uh, Federico Bianculo of Big Picture Visuals. This is your company with which you create artworks. Yeah. But you're also the guy behind the Control Z blog, which is probably the most influential blog for architecture and archivist related topics in Italy, right? Yeah, uh, it's not just about, you know, art piece because it's something that it's relatively new to me, so to say. I mean, the blog was born as a platform to like, educate people in architectural communication and illustration. And recently I've been also giving tips on professional development. So it's a broader, broader spectrum of topics. But yeah, I mean... It's a shame it's, that it's in Italian because I guess that a lot of people will benefit I know, I, I thought several times about localizing it to English, but you know, it's really a huge amount of work. So, yeah. so, and there's a lot going on at the moment. So I have to, you know, focus my energy on certain things. But yeah, it's, it's been on my mind for a while, actually. Yeah. Okay, let's not give too much away as of now. Let's just start to do questions. And then I feel that, you know, this information will come out naturally in a way. Let's go. So okay. I'll just get to it. So, you know, uh, questions are pretty standard. Some questions I had to adjust to fit your profile because you're not really a company as, you know, with multiple people, but I let you explain that by answering, you know, the first question slash task. Try to introduce yeah, sure. yourself. Try to introduce yourself in two minutes or less. Yeah, so as, a, as I was saying before, my... Um... My experience in the art this field is relatively, you know, fresh. I've been working since 2015 as a as a visualizer. I was um, as a in house vis I was as an house visualizer for a Dutch firm, a very big firm, Meccano, and it was a really like significant experience for me because Meccano is one of those firms which invests a lot in uh, visualization. They want things really well made, and they had a that people in house that used to do all the press releases, all the competition images. So that was really good. And also project leaders were really into, you know, visualization. Some of them, they were really interested in this topic. So it was a really like big learning experience. And then I had the opportunity to learn a bit more about how it works in a visualization company. And I was, I was there really briefly because I just realized pretty quickly that the place that I wanted to be was not Netherlands. But I was actually going back to Italy. So I tried to carve my own way and um, trying to work from, from Italy. Now, I'm from the South, like you. So, you know, we, we really understand each other. But right, right now, I'm actually in Bologna, which is a bit more to the north. But it's a beautiful place with a really nice lifestyle, really nice food and weather. So it's going well. I mean, lifestyle is also pretty important when it comes to us. You know, you cannot just let your head go in tunnel vision on, on the job. On, on working so you have to go out you have to you know go somewhere visit places uh, exhibitions movies and i think bologna is a really good place in order to do so but i yeah. totally agree and i like the fact that you know you uh you brought this up because i think that very often people just focus on one aspect of doing the job which is you know putting yourself in the place where things can happen and, you know, for some people, it could be, I don't know, New York. For some other people, it could be London. But eventually, once you get to where you want to be, then you should start to address things like, okay, now what? Am I happy to stay here? 
can I do what I'm doing from some somewhere else? And sometimes this is a challenge. And one of the reasons why I really wanted to talk to you is because being an Italian, we know how the Italian community likes to complain about stuff. <laughs> but then I also like when somebody from Italy manages to do what you did, for instance, and then go back to Italy to continue doing what it is that you're doing. So, you know, this is one way to fix the problem that maybe in Italy there is no job or clients don't pay as well as they do abroad. You took your initiative and you actually put yourself in a much better situation. And for that, I'm very proud of you because, you know, being thank Italian. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Italian pride uh, going on right here, guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, uh, let's just use this to move to the next question. Yeah. Do you recall the moment in your life you say, okay, this is what it's going to be. I'll be an archivist artist. You know, you made the switch from working in an architecture office. There you discovered some skills. And then you made the decision to just focus on production. Am I correct? So, yeah, 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 exactly. And I have to say, I remember really well that moment because I was born, not born, but my education is the education of an architect. I studied architecture in Italy for five years, and I thought that my way was going to be architecture. So my first step was trying to get internships abroad. I visited a few places in for the span of four years, among which Netherlands, of course, but I was in Berlin for six months as an intern and also in Denmark. And it's in Denmark, and to a certain extent, also in the Netherlands before, that I started you know, discovering my passion for visualization. I mean, I, I designed as well. well. While I was an intern, I also designed as well. But I was working a lot on presentation images, and it was kind of painful, like, to, to be honest in that. But I slowly realized that I was feeling good only when I did images. So when, uh, when I was in, the, in Denmark, my, it was my last, my last internship as an architect, I just figured out, okay, guys, this is not working out for me. Uh, I, what I want to do is doing images from now on. And that time coincided when I decided also to found the content set blog, for example. So it was a really turning point in my career. And then from, from then on, it was you know, also a series of lucky coincidences because I, I left my intern in, internship in, uh, in Denmark and soon after I figured out that Meccano was looking for, for architectural visualizers so I just sent my you know, my application so why not I mean I can just get experience and learn from them and eventually it turned out pretty well I have to say so yeah it's uh, the moment is when I shifted from architecture to visualization full time it was a slow process but I tried to pinpoint that when I was in Denmark, basically. So it was kind of the, the illumination on Damascus way. I don't know if you say that in English, but it, it conveys the idea, you know. It really does. And I, you know, sometimes I think that people underestimate the courage that it takes. Because, you know, architecture is still pretty much considered a career job, whilst, you know, making images is like, uh, it's maybe something that I do just for a while. and Yeah, then, you know, some people, they just consider it like a side gig, you know, yeah. like, ah, you can be an architect, but I can also do images. And it's, it's hard to make people understand that also this can be a full-time job. This could be a career as well. And there's a lot of things going on in this universe. But it's getting there. Also in Italy, I think it's slowly getting there eventually. So also architects are, are understanding much more than before the value of well-done image, an image with a artistic value with a behind you know that's a, that's a positive aspect of being here at this moment i mean in italy of course that's very interesting okay so <clears throat> let me know what do you think was your biggest turning point in your career i have to say that i think being at mechano was a a huge turning point because i really got to work close to people that pushed my my skills in a certain way. Um, so, of course, certain times I was left on my own doing my own images, but sometimes I had the chance to work with fantastic project leaders that did a great job also with images. So that taught me a lot about how to arrange, compose an image, about how to think behind the technical aspects, for example. 
So that was really a turning point. And another turning point was also probably working for for organization companies soon after, even if it was just a, like a brief time, like six months or so not a long time. It taught me a lot in a certain way. Even if there were like negative lessons, like how not to do certain things. But, you know, it's still a lesson. And eventually everything turns out to be useful in your path. Could be like contacts, friends made, because while I was working as a visualizer in a company for six months, I made really close friends that I still in touch with them. I still work with them. So, you know, you have to try to take the best out of even like bad situation, things that appear really bleak at the, at the time you're in. But yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I mean, trying to get the best out of everything. Uh, I don't know if that answers the question. I think I went a bit off the rails. I don't know. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes I think that, uh, you know, experiences are can be very personal that probably it's very difficult to give a standard answer. And this is the reason why I like to ask standard questions because the message all the time is that there isn't necessarily right or wrong, you know, and there are ways that you can approach, um, you know, the career the way others maybe didn't. Yeah, it's, it's very subjective. It's something that I try to tell myself all the time, like, okay, I should not compare so much myself to other people in trying to, you know, put the things close because everybody has different opinions, different, you know, history and, you know, you cannot just compare yourself all the time. And it's also unhealthy to a certain extent because yes. everybody comes from a different ground, background. So just don't do that. Just don't. I'm just trying to find some of your artworks so that I can uh, overlay them on the screen so that people can, uh, all right. can, can see the work that you do because, you know, um, we should probably remind people you're a one-person company, right? Yeah, it's one man show right now, even though things are changing, uh, they will be changing. But still, I but think yeah, right that, now, you know, yeah. the quality of your work, it's absolutely stunning. There Thanks, is man. this, um, you know, quality of craftsmanship. I, I don't know, it's difficult to explain. It's, uh, it's like looking at something that was made, you know, in a lab and with a lot of details and very well uh, mm -hmm. designed and thought through. And I really like it, you know, it's, um, I have to say props to you for this. Thank you, man, I appreciate that. Okay, so let me just ask, since we're talking about, you know, the, the way you do things, to what do you think you attribute your success and what do you think makes your work different from the one of others? Yeah, that's, um, you know, that's not an easy question to, to answer because... We don't want this, easy answers. <laughs> I know, we don't want easy answers. And I'm not going to give you one easy answer, but since I've been doing this just for one year as a, as a company, one, one man show, whatever you want to call it, but right now what I can tell you is when, you, when you're looking for a style, you know, it's something that it takes a long, long time to reach that. So I, for me, I cannot talk yet about style, but, you know, being... Uh, having been so much that was so much so long close contact to architects, you know, to architects, it's um, what I do differently. It's, you know, trying to uh, establish a kind of collaboration, a collaborative process with my clients. So I try to be in touch with them. I try to, you know, give hints also about the, the design part, trying to give an input about materialization and this kind of, you know, aspects. I mean, I admire a lot and, I understand completely those firms that try to, you know, carve their own time away from clients for one week, two weeks. I think it's great and maybe eventually we'll go there. But for me right now, what's working is kind of the opposite. Having a close relationship with my clients, but you know, you still have to be careful and not try to, you know, adding clients over rule or trying to push you too much. That's also pretty important. But what I do different is this, I mean, having this kind of close relationship and give this kind of consulting to the architects in a, in a certain, to a certain extent, you know, it's uh, it's not an easy answer, of course, <laughs> it's not even an easy question, but yeah. I like the fact that you made um, a quick, you know, uh, that you highlighted the fact that clients should not overrule, because I think that very often what happens is that when people really want to help clients because they're focused on 
producing the best work possible, they misunderstand this and they basically try to do everything that the client says. Mm. Which is actually, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just, you know, you have to think this, what the client says to you is not always their best interest. Sometimes you have to protect the client against himself. And I'm telling this because it's something that I try to say myself all the time, like, okay, this is a bad decision for a client of mine. I have to warn him of this. It's my job to tell him, okay, look, this is not, this is not a good idea and that's the reason why. This is also our job as visualizers, as consultants, as professionals, artists, whatever you call them. But that's what we have to do and that's what has to differentiate us from, you know, people that are fresh in the industry or they're like, you know, they're starting out. That's what you have to, to give to the client if you want to be called like real professionals. We have to offer a service rather than a product, as you say a lot in your videos, you know. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's the thing. You have to be able to, to set boundaries and tell clients what's working according to your experience, what's not working in into an image, into a product. I like what you said, protect the client from their bad I mean, decisions. <laughs> I think this is what uh, Italy has been trying to do now for um, like a lot of time, you know, a very long time we've been trying to protect foreigners from putting pineapple on pizza. <laughs> it's uh, not in their best interest. Yeah, it's not in their best interest, of course. And I, I still cringe when I see that and I saw a lot of pineapple on pizzas. I still cannot get over that. Like, <laughs> that's no. a joke. That's a joke, guys. Don't hate us, okay? We don't put pineapple on our no, we're, pizza. We're just speaking about our food, but you can do whatever you want with your pizza. And, and, uh, well, I have to say, I'm actually quite not fine, but I can accept pineapple on pizza. I just cannot accept ketchup on pasta. Ah, uh, uh, no. <laughs> that's too much. We gonna we gonna get a lot of hate from people hey, watching hey, this. Yeah, video. yeah, I know, I know. yeah. But we're known for this kind of bickering with food and yeah. Listen, it's Federico, I'm I'm interested a little bit uh, in uh, talking about mental sanity. You know, uh, I think that you and I can relate a little bit more because we've been freelancers, the both of us, and. You know, I've had my low times and in the past we talked also about you having low times. I guess this is a little bit like you cannot really avoid it. So I'm just going to ask it to you. In terms of mental sanity, working in this field can be very stressful. You work long hours, clients are what they are. You have to negotiate, compromise, optimize. Has this been affecting your profession, your personality, the way you uh, feel about the job, the way you react to the job. What are the things that you have learned and how do you maintain your head above the water? That's, uh, I think it's a really hot topic, especially for people that are lone one-man shows. But even if you're in a company, it's not like you can just incur into burnout and this kind of illness, is, you know. It's difficult, I have to say, freelancing is, is not for everyone because you have to wear so many hats. You have to be the artist, you have to be the art director, you have to be the accountant, and you have to do the administration. So it's, it's very stressful and you have to find a way out somehow. For me, uh, well, living here, for example, here in Italy, I have to say it helps a lot because I was just thinking about it like the other, the other weekend, I was just out and was thinking, yeah, you know, even just staying here in the city center and having a walk and eating outside on a terrace, you know, it's just already really, really helpful for, you know, as a, as a stop, like, like taking a breath, you know, and seeing something nice outside, exhibition, art in the streets. And it's just, it's just something nice that pulls you out of your, of your routine somehow. But yeah, I also have to say, I'm, since it's, uh, it's been a really like, concern of mine as well. I started like, a path, personal path in trying to understand how to address this, uh, these needs of mine. Because, you know, the risk is that you get sucked in in your work, you know, and you get so much into, into the zone or you want to do so much work at once or you want to do the best possible for your clients or for yourself. You just get sucked in and you forget about everything. I think you have to set boundaries within yourself, like saying, okay, this is work time. This is fun time because also fun time is very important, you know. I mean, I, I'm really avid video game consumer and I'm trying to stay like that, you know. Uh, 
I want to stay like that also because it's an inspiration for for my work. But in general, what I can say is just trying to, you know, be aware of decisions they can incur to you, but you have always, always to learn from, from this experience. And you have to be honest with yourself and trying to tell, okay, that's a risk, but I'm be I'm going to be strong. I'm going to learn from these experiences. I'm going to I'm going to manage it. I'm going to learn how to manage myself. So it's for it's not for the faith of art, I have to say. It's it's difficult also for me to answer these kind of questions because it's something that I'm still learning how to how to get a grip on that. I mean, right now I'm just learning how to say no, for example, because some jobs in certain certain periods are just, you know, better not to take them. But not because of clients and this reason, but also for your like health because you cannot just work full time like one job after another with a short deadline sometimes you have to to stop not think about you know revenue not think about growth you have to think about you know personal space at a certain point you have to say okay sorry i'm not available to do this i hope we, we can collaborate in the future you have to be strong enough to say no sometimes and that that also can help and i think also a bit of fun you know can help like joking with friends about what's happening behind the scenes, like making fun, running jokes. It's something that helps me a lot with my friends when, I, when we have jokes about past situations. You know, it's, uh, it's just something fun for myself. I try to not to dramatize things that happen, just that. I try to laugh about errors in the past and situations that happen. Yeah, just that. I just want to specify one of the things that you said, you know, you said sometimes you don't, you cannot really think about growth, you cannot really think about uh, revenue. Um, I think I know what you mean, but probably we should specify that you need to put yourself in a financial position so that you don't have to worry about growth and about, uh, you know, revenue, because that's the thing that, you know, sometimes people don't even know how to make ends meet and they see that there is too much work and too much pressure and they have to continue because they don't have the possibility to say no. When actually, if you charge the right price for the services that you do, if you are in a good uh, business position to get the amount of work that you need to fit your daily budget, whatever, then you are in a position where you can say, I don't care about making 10,000 more. I just need a little bit of time for myself to regenerate. Yeah, exactly. I, and exactly, it's true. And it's not easy. It's, it's difficult. But you also, you always, always have to take into consideration your personal state and your mental possibilities in a certain specific moment, of course. And planning before, it's, uh, it's a good way to, to put yourself into this position. Yeah. Okay, now let me ask you. You can be as free as you like, you know, both you, the entrepreneur, the artist, you can decide how you want to answer this question. Okay. What is that scares you the most? Mm. Yeah. What we said before about growth. Yeah. That's what scares me the most. Like being a one man show is really hard when it comes to research and development. And in this field, research and development is fundamental you have to be on par with your colleagues with other companies you have to research new friends you have to research new tools all the time and what scares me most is to to stay behind you know to be left behind trends behind technology and when you're alone this fear is even worse because you cannot keep it up with everything so that that's also i'm also really relating to what you said on your previous videos for example about either you just start your own company or you just become part of a bigger company because being alone for so much time, you know, makes you think about certain aspects of the, of the job. And eventually you have to make the transition, you know, because if you want to be like a, a professional that has certain tools and can answer to the market, you have to keep going on and be up to date all the time. And if you're alone, if you have to wear so many ads, it becomes really, really difficult. It's not impossible, but then, you know, if you kind of start learning stuff and then you don't have the time to follow up on clients or, you know, it can be a little bit tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it also goes goes back to to what we said before about the time of having also space and this adds up to all the things that you have to do, you know. 
So it's something else that you add on, on, on top of it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Now I'm no, glad that you're saying this because you know the the idea very often people write me saying to me that I try to discourage people from going freelance. And actually it's quite the contrary. I do want that people go freelance because they can learn what uh, type of responsibilities they have to have when doing this job. Because very often people just think that since you know how to do renderings, then clients will come to you asking for renderings. This is not the case. No. So, you know, one way to understand it is you do freelance jo work. You do understand what it's actually happening when you do freelance or when you try to do the stuff by yourself. But then you need to be mature enough to understand either you want to take the responsibility of hiring people and, you know, create something. That means that you also take the economical responsibility. <laughs> Or you'd say, I recognize that this is my limitation. I want to be part of something bigger. Being a freelance for a little while will put me in that position because my next employer will know that I'm able to take responsibility, will know that I take the lead, you know. But if you have to go into freelance and just have to offer super cheap prices, just because you want to make renders, this does not add value to who you are as an artist, does not add value to the community. So, you know, it's why are you doing it? Of course. I mean, I still think, I do think that being freelance is a highly, highly educational experience. Yes. For, for one, because you start thinking about stuff, you know, you start thinking that something on the other side is not just I, pretty pictures, I, uh, you know, I get paid and that's it. No, that's, that's much more behind. And yes. you, you learn a lot by doing in, in this kind of line of work. It's really learning by doing. And also the realization is pretty important, like realizing if it's for you or if you're just better off working for somebody else. It's, uh, it's really, I think it's something that I would suggest to people that are, are, they want to do this, but they have to have some kind of safety net, you know, because you cannot just start being a freelance, hoping that work will come to you. You have to build a network. You have to, you know, have clients that, you know that can, that they're willing to pay you for what you do already, because otherwise it makes no point. I mean, I don't want I don't want to discourage people with that, but it's really important that people understand that freelancing it's all about network as well. That's uh, that's something that maybe we're gonna touch up again. Uh, yeah, on. Uh, it's another <laughs> hot topic. Yeah, but anyway. Again, I talk to you both as a person, as an artist, as a, even as an entrepreneur. If you could go back in time, what would be the one thing that you would change about your life? Uh, I thought about it uh, also as well in the, in the next few, in the past few weeks, months. Um, what I would do is probably spend a bit more time in a visualization office, I would say. Because, you know, especially if you are like a senior level, a high level, you really learn a lot about how to manage expectations and manage clients, which is a really important part of opening your own company, being a freelance, whatever you call it. And I think for me, it was really a two, was too little time spent researching these kind of topics, you know? So what I will do is just probably trying to spend more time in a good visualization companies, maybe a company that does research and development, a company that offers training to, to employees. They, you know, this kind of stuff I, I would have, like to look for in a company. I mean, actually, life turned out to be different. I'm not complaining. I mean, everybody chooses its own path, but it's right. I mean, but yeah, if I could change something, that would be it, probably. That's uh, that's very nice. Okay, then let me ask you. Um, you know, you're a freelancer, but it can happen that you work with some other freelancers together. You know, that you outsource a little bit of work or you collaborate on projects. Uh, in that in those terms what is your criteria when choosing who do you want to work with in other words what do you think makes other freelancers appetible for you to you know contact and hopefully work together establish a work relationship which is actually something that is happening right now i mean i started collaborating with other freelance uh, it's just the reason this 
uh, what I look for, I mean, yeah, I tried a mutual exchange of ideas, you know, because I'm not trying to go for someone that uh, that is really close to my way of thinking. I try to look for somebody that can add value to my work. And ideally, that's something that I also would, would, would like to bring in my company if I, if I manage to build one in the future, uh, trying to look for people that I can add value, can add information, can add passion can add the interest to, to what I can offer to client. I mean, I would just, try, for example, try to look for somebody that does something completely def- different from what I do. Some, somebody that is interested, for example, in movies, which I'm not really, I mean, I'm not really interested in movies. I would like to get, you know, some movie, movie nerd, some movie geek in the company just to add, you know, this kind of extra level of uh, interest to the images and product. So I would like to, you know, Look for someone that can uh, add this layer of art, of uh, life experiences to what I do. That, that's what I would look for. I'm not so focused on the technical aspect, you know, because technical aspect is something that you can easily learn once you get you grasp the basics. Uh, it's something that I also tell a lot to my, to my students on the, on the website, on the blog, not to focus on the technical aspects of the, of the image, but rather study, you know, composition, photography, art. Try to get an image right before it gets into the engine, into the software. Mm. Uh, study before, like study cinema, uh, study video games, study art, painting, study whatever you want. And then afterwards, you can just start learning your software of choice. You know. Learn how to justify to your parents that playing video games is actually studying. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> but anyway, and then I just stop the, you know, I just stop the screen to take pictures, you know, or photo mode. <laughs> No, I think it's very important that, you know, you keep an open mind about everything and very often probably another mistake that especially those who are still in school and are trying to study and they're trying to advance in their career fast is that they focus just on the topic that it's relevant to them and they are not able to see beauty and to seek beauty in other things when actually some of the most successful projects that you get to see very often have uh, references to other works of art. Yeah, there's also the problem of accepting works work with a really short deadline that you enter in a tunnel vision and you forget about the uh, you know the reference and the artistic part of a job and you just go tunnel vision and just work 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 production 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 and yeah you can you can make a pretty decent image but. That image will not have the kick, you know, that, that, that something that makes you think, ah, probably I did a good job. But of course, your, your work will be always better and better and better. But stopping by and saying, ah, no, this is not bad. Yeah, that would work. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's really important to also that. Take, taking your time to go back to the, one of the questions, taking your time to do stuff, you know, to research and learn and apply above all. Let me ask you, what do you think artists need to do to advance in their career? And I want your opinion because you being a freelancer, what is being one of the things that has been affecting you on a personal level that you said, if you do this, this will definitely add value. And you know, don't mention the D2 conference because no. it's like, okay, yeah, this is a plug, Fabio. Very nice. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to mention conferences, but I'm going to mention networking anyway, because that's it. I mean, if you're a freelancer, I was, as I was saying before, it's all about your network. And apart from network with, with clients, because of course that, that's obvious, but it's also networking with other, with other people, and especially when you're alone, working on your own. You have to open up from feedback from other people. You don't have, you, you don't need to be afraid of feedback and show show your work to other people and asking for for opinions. Uh, try to to expose your work to peers and get you know learn. Try to learn from them. But going back to network, I think yeah, it's something that definitely helps in building a freelance or a company career. Having your network that can help you tapping your network when you're starting like. All people that you work with. I mean, I was kind of lucky because I, I did so much in the past as an architect that I could just basically tap my network in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Denmark to, to start starting off. You know, so there was you know trying to to read, try to read what I saw before being a visualizer. So that that was the idea behind 
and also it's very important another thing what i was telling you before about being in a company um for freelance it's also very important to learn how to manage the client expectations uh how to manage the communication with the client that's also very important it's something that can definitely make the growth make you grow from a you know an artist to maybe a senior or a project manager having this ability to you know talk to your client reassure him and steer him the right way that's something definitely useful especially if you want to work as a senior in a company you have to be really really good at this well there are certain companies that even see which even seniors don't do communication but in general seniors are supposed to communicate with their clients no so that's something that you really have to learn carefully and you have to get it's it's not just you know not about just the hard skills but also about the soft skills you know the personal skills that's it if i would if i were to give an advice it would be just learn soft skills communication skills artistic skills don't focus on technical that's it technical one day will not exist anymore yeah we, we, we're just going towards that and it's just you know with the ai revolution i think ai will help us a great deal will help us a lot in automatizing boring tasks but the artistic component it's going to be a while before ai can tackle that so i'd say that creative professions in the next 30 years 20 years i see them in a positive aspect they're in a good shape i think yeah yeah i have to agree i mean you know obviously some jobs will disappear but there will be other jobs <laughs> like it has happened until now you know in case we are not able to predict the future and we are totally wrong then we'll find another way you know it's uh, it's as simple as that uh, it's just still humanity you know think about the industrial revolution how it happened like machine machine operators were like lost in a, in a couple of you know in the span of 10 years five years so that's just what's happening right now it's, it's part of the life cycle it's part of humanity it's uh, but i think this is the beautiful thing about creativity once you have been able to transform an idea into value you can do this also with yourself if you know your job was going to disappear you can simply say okay if this position doesn't exist anymore what can i do that i can keep doing what i'm doing without necessarily have to you know uh say renounce to things you know what i mean yeah. and architects are especially good at reinventing themselves mm. that's something that i noticed i mean my architects friends they're doing all kind of different stuff like their cooks their clerks they're they're doing all kind of stuff so that's this kind of flexibility behind our you know mind of an architect so it's um it's not something that worries you. it's worrying me a lot because i don't know maybe in 10 years i won't be doing visualization anymore i don't know so uh, i just i just keep my options open so it's not it's not so worrying so for me yeah i mean you know in my case i'm also an architect and an engineer but i mainly work in marketing <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you see so people should not worry okay so let me just ask i have the last question and we are way above our 30 minutes mark but that's fine I didn't count. <laughs> yeah it's a, <laughs> it, it goes fast you know it goes fast and you don't have to worry as you know our effort in making these videos is to inspire others to do more and better especially the younger ones now in your case you are probably one of the younger ones <laughs> I don't know. I I I'm trying to put block, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying <laughs> I to see put myself my as a new kid on the block, yeah. I'm trying to put myself into the uh, young people box. <laughs> not... You're young, Fabio. You're young at heart. At I, I look I look young. I look young. <laughs> yeah, you're but in, inside well, I'm an old person. Anyway, <laughs> do you think there is something that uh, the the younger generations are still not understanding about this this industry? Or do you think there is something that even, you know, the not so young anymore still don't understand about the, this industry? And one of the examples that I always uh, bring up when uh, trying to explain this question is that it took me very long to figure out that archivist is not a job where you can sit in an office and wait for somebody to tell you what you do. You need to be able to produce value by yourself. So with that said, what would your advice be instead? 
Mm. Yeah, I was just saying it's basically being proactive, you know. So you cannot just sit on your on your chair in your room or your office and waiting for work to come. But you know, I will just make a distinction here between young generations and not so young generations, especially for Italy, which uh, which is a really you know it's a tough it's a tough terrain in Italy, you know, about when you talk about visualization because older architects they haven't not all of them. Of course, there's exceptions. The, the exceptions are becoming hopefully more frequent, but still many architects, they don't value image as an um, honest uh, means of communicating architecture in Italy. And, you know, I hope we'll have the chance to talk about this soon, but uh, for me, this is a mistake because basically architecture is still a product that you want to sell. And not all people, they speak the language of section plan. Like most people don't speak the language. So you need images you need certain means to make sure that your product is understood by your client but yeah in Italian architects they still think about yeah architects should be pure should be not you know tainted by blah 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 visualization etc etc so that's a mistake that older generation do not thinking about the need of selling their products to images in this case but rather want to want to give this aura of purity somehow but Young generation, what I see, yeah, I see, I see it a lot on um, the email that I get from readers of Composite Blog and from the Facebook group that I have. That I was, I would say before, young young people, students, what they do is focusing too much on the technical aspect. So when somebody posts surrender in the group, for example, no, first question is, how did you do this? Which software did you use? Wrong question. <laughs> That's not the question you should ask. You should instead ask, what's your reference? What inspired you doing this piece? You know, because software, as I said before, is something that you can learn with time. And software is becoming easier and easier. Take into account Corona, for example. Corona is one of the best rendering engines out there. It's, it's a wonderful piece of software. It's so easy to use that everybody can, that comes from a rendering engine it, I mean, it can just learn it. Up the day and it's ready to go, ready for production. Like bam, you're you're ready. And, and people still think, what random what random engine you use to do this image? It's something that still baffles me somehow. And that's what I want to say to people that young people that could see this interview, that hopefully reach the end of this interview because it's really long. Don't focus on software. You have time to learn software. Focus if you want to be a visualizer, a good one, focus on art. Focus on surrounding yourself by beauty. Focus on going to exhibition. Focus on studying art, studying movies, studying composition. Study this. And then, then you can learn your software. You can choose whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. Like I, I always think about these guys that do this masterpiece with MS Paint, which is not anymore like produced by okay. I always think about these guys. I mean, you can use it's not easy, it's not comfortable, whatever, right? But these guys that can do masterpieces and good drawings with paint because they take it as a challenge. So if they can do it, it's all about what you have in mind, you know. Mm. That's it. Federico, we got to the end of this conversation. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate the content and the value that you brought to the community. I am very proud of the fact that we were able to do this in English. Uh, <laughs> not, not, not because, not because, not because, you know, I did not uh, think that you could do it. It's just because maybe this could push you into maybe thinking of doing some more content of your own in English so that, you know, even uh, uh, not Italian can benefit from it. That's all I wanted to say. All right. No. I know, I, I, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's something, it's, I told you, it's, it's still on my mind. I really want to do that eventually at a certain point, you know. But I'm just one. So we'll see what, what the future holds. <laughs> just give it time. Don't worry. You're meant to do great things, and I'm sure of it. Thanks, man. It means a lot to me that you're saying that, truly. <laughs> Federico, I'm going to pause the recording. Thanks a lot for being here. If you want to say goodbye, this is the time. Just go. Yeah, okay. Well, just, just thank you for listening to this interview. And if you arrive to the end, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thank you, Fabio. Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate you attacking me for this. Uh, thank you. Just that. <laughs>